All right, gang, welcome to your last chapter. Congrats on making it this far. Uh, we're gonna look at the F distribution and something called one-way ANOVA. We have a little typo in the homework, just um, be on the lookout for that. So by the end of this chapter, we should interpret the F probability distribution as the number of groups and the number of samples, or excuse me, and the sample size changes. And then we're gonna do one-way ANOVA. We're gonna conduct and interpret one-way ANOVA. Now, ANOVA, it's an acronym. It stands for Analysis of Variance. So the AN comes from analysis, the O comes from of, and the VA comes from variance. So that's why we call it ANOVA, or I shouldn't say that's why we call it ANOVA, but that's where it's coming from. And there is something called two-way ANOVA. Um, there's also something, if you ever wanna, once you major in stats, which I'm sure we all will, there's also something called, oops, ANCOVA, which is analysis of covariances. And we're not gonna get into that, but I just want you to hear, you can go a lot farther in this topic. So we're just gonna do one way ANOVA. We're gonna keep it to the simplest form of all of this. And to give you an overview of where we're going, all right, so you still have this flow chart that's in play, but basically for everything in chapter 13, we're gonna have a numerical variable and we'll have three or more groups. All right, so three or more samples, treatments, groups, and that's when you get to the three or more um, branch of this tree diagram, we're gonna go with the ANOVA F test. So we're gonna be in mean land, we're gonna be looking at averages, but we're just gonna have three or more averages that we wanna look at. And that's when you run the ANOVA test. And, and as long as you just have the one numerical variable you're looking at, you're, you're running one way ANOVA. So let me give you a scenario here, right? Consider the following investigation. A car magazine wishes to compare the average, I wanna underline the average gas mileage of three similar car models and has available six, of, six vehicles of each model. So just before we even get going into this, pretend you had three car models you wanted to compare. Um, just thinking off the top of my head, I'll tell you the, the car I drive, I drive a Toyota Corolla. I think there's two R's in that. That's not looking right. Maybe there's only the one. Maybe it's just the one R. All right, you can tell how much I know about the car I drive. All right, Corolla. Does that look better? I think it does. Um, what's comparable to a Corolla? Over on the Honda, and I know they have the Honda Civic. Uh, what's another car company out there? Um, oh, I think the Nissan Sentra maybe? I don't know enough about cars that are comparable to the Corolla, but imagine you had six Corollas, you had six Civics, and six Sentras, right? Because that's what they're saying. You have six vehicles of each model. And ultimately you wanna find out who's got the better gas mileage on average. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill these six Toyota Corollas up with a lot of gas, and you're just gonna have them run around a track, well not run, drive around a track until they run out of gas and clock the mileage, right? You're gonna do the same thing for the Hondas, and you're gonna do the same thing for the Nissans, right? So we're gonna have all these cars just driving around tracks till they run out of gas. We're gonna keep track of how many miles they, they drove, get the gas mileage for each of these six, then take the average of those six for our little X bar and compare our averages, right? That's what we're doing here. Now, are we in mean land or proportion land? We are in mean land because we saw the word average, right? From each of these vehicles, each of these 18 vehicles in total, we're gonna be getting a number from them, right? I wanna figure out how many miles did you drive? So I can divide that out and get your average gas mileage, right? So I wanna figure out how many miles per gallon did you get? Cause I'll know how big each of these tanks are, right? How many gallons they're holding. So I'll get the average gas mileage. Now we can't use a two sample mean t-test. Why? Well, we can't use a t two sample mean t-test because we have three groups, right? So I, I can't use two sample mean t when I have three different averages we wanna compare, all right? So I'll put here because we have three groups. So stats folks realized something was up with this. We were like, oh no, what are we gonna do? What, what, do, what happens when we wanna compare averages and then we have more than two groups, two treatments, two samples, that kind of thing. So if, if I was gonna run two sample mean t-tests, it would become pretty cumbersome because I'd have to first compare the Corollas to the Civics. 
right? Then I'd have to compare the Corollas to the Centras. And then I'd have to compare the Civics to the Centras. So even with that, I would need to run three separate two sample mean t-tests. And it, that would just be really, really cumbersome. So we came up with a, a different way of doing it, okay? So I'm gonna still say, I already said some of this part out loud, but we would like to run a test to see if the average gas mileage for the three car models are different. And in order to do this, we would need to run the three versions of the two sample mean t-tests, right? Corollas to Hondas, Corollas to Nissans, and then Hondas to Nissans, right? It's very, very cumbersome. And we came up with a better, quicker way, or I should say quicker, better way, if I wanna read my own words. And that quicker, better way is something called one-way ANOVA. So we have more than two averages to compare. And when I say more than two, that's equivalent to saying three or more, okay? But we have more than two averages to compare, so we're gonna run an ANOVA hypothesis test. And, and with an ANOVA hypothesis test is gonna come a couple of new vocabulary terms. So let's introduce those, get those under our belt. So the, the two new vocabulary terms, we're gonna pick up factor and level. So factor is a characteristic under consideration thought to influence the measured observations. All right, so this seems a little vague right now. The factor is categorical in nature. All right, so this thing is categorical in nature. And I don't mean like out in the world of nature, I just mean in general. And, and it has to do with how the different observations are grouped. So this will be a word, all right? Now level will be a number, all right? So level is the value of the factor. And when you hear level is the value of the factor, it just means how many groups did you have? So that's gonna be the number that's associated with this. So we're back here, right? We're back on our same, our same setup. All right, I, I wanna just point out, we know we're in mean land, all right? So we definitely know we're in mean land. <clears throat> all right, our variable, this time out is gas mileage. That's a numerical variable. And it should be, anytime you have a numerical variable, you're looking at averages. And this time out, you have three groups. So that's how you know you're gonna run a one-way ANOVA test. All right, and with that, let's pick up some of our new vocab terms. All right, so it says, what is the factor in this investigation? So how was I grouping these these 18 cars, I was grouping them by model. So our factor is car model. All right, now when I say how many levels does this factor have? Well, we had three different car models, so we have three levels. Now we also wanna ma manage that or balance that against the total sample size, right? So what was our total sample size? Well, there were actually 18 cars involved between the three models, okay? So we're gonna assign a couple of letters to these new vocab terms. So whenever you hear factor, we're gonna call that letter K, okay? So in this example, K would equal three. So that's one of the numbers that you gotta, you gotta keep track of. We gotta keep track of the number that's associated with our factor. So the factor itself is a word, right? But the levels, we go with K equaling three. Now, total sample size, right? Sample size has always been N. It's still N in this case. So we have N equaling 18 here. All right, so the levels of the factor are assigned the letter K and the total sample size from all of the groups gets the letter N. All right. Now, as we start to progress through this, you can think of ANOVA. It's kind of like doing a T-squared test, all right, where when we were doing the chi-squareds, all right, chi-squares, or I'll, I'll write it out in words so I don't have too many symbols going on here. Chi-square back in chapter 11, that was kind of like running a Z-squared test. All right, we, we're basically gonna square all of our statistics so that they're always positive and we're gonna run right-tailed tests, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at the graphs on each of these in a little bit, uh, or not in a little bit, on the next page, and then we're gonna run our first ANOVA together. I'll see you in a bit, bye.